All right, then let's start for today. Um, I have a new nice story for you, the proxy, automatic proxy conversion. That's our journey from VW that we have taken in the last few years. And I would like to tell you my story about it and how I became a maintainer of the proxy. <laughs> so um, let's start with the introduction first. My name is Jan Michael Brummer. I'm a long time open source contributor uh, since 1995, starting with some reverse engineering of fingerprint drivers, which are now part of libfprintd, and then some ACPI stuff. And then I moved up the stack to the desktop level, where I'm stack taking part in the GNOME development. I'm maintainer of the GNOME web on some nice tools like Roger Router or the banking app for the FinTS standard in Germany. So uh, maybe you've heard of some of them. Um, this means, of course, that I'm also a contributor to uh, GTK, Glib, GNOME, Systemd, and so on. So a uh, nice full of stack of story, I can tell you. <laughs> and luckily, uh, I'm on the professional side, I have the opportunity to be a business partner management, a partner manager at VW Group IT. That means I'm responsible for the requirements of our, all of our brands and uh, to fulfill them in the group, group IT. And I'm also responsible for the Linux client at VW. And thanks to my boss, I have the chance uh, to also fix problems that we are finding in open source environment and also developing new software in the open source uh, environment and bring them upstream. So, Let's start with our journey. Um, that's the Linux client at VW. Uh, maybe you're wondering why we are using Linux at all at VW, because it's most likely a Windows world. No, it's not. Uh, we do have our software guys sitting at the carriot, and they were in need of a Linux client because car software development is no longer possible without the Linux system, because there are some third-party uh, vendors like NVIDIA, who's saying uh, you will only get support when you're using a Linux distribution in a specific version, otherwise you're doomed. <laughs> uh, this also means that we have had a lot of self-managed Linux system and environment. This is, of course, not an accepted solution for us as a group IT. And um, so it will scale for a low number of people, of course, but once you're starting to uh, set up the environment for a complete software uh, development group, like hundreds and thousands of people, you still or you are in need for a managed client. And that's why I stepped up and said, okay, uh, the requirements that we need in Ubuntu 2004 with adjustments for the corporate environment. And why Ubuntu? Because of NVIDIA. NVIDIA is saying uh, you're only getting support for our ADA system when you're using Ubuntu 2004 or 1804 at this time. Uh, otherwise, you will get no support. Simple as that, unfortunately. And adjustment for the corporate environment, of course, means that we'll have to deal with the security policies. Uh, let it be virus scanners, uh, malware detection, or, of course, the proxy environment that I'm talking here about today. So the problems we have had facing in the past are uh, on the one side, on the proprietary software side, that the proprietary vendor are saying, hey, uh, we do have a nice software for you. Let it be the VPN client, the antivirus software, and we do have support for Ubuntu 2004 or Linux in different version, whatever. But when you start using it, uh, you get the feeling, uh, no, it's not that well tested at all. Um, but the same applies to the open source software as well, because uh, proxy configuration or network configuration is something that most of the open source developers do not have in mind, unfortunately. And this means all the most common issues are the proxies issues uh, and unfortunate, oops, sorry, this leads to unhappy users. <laughs> And we have a lot of support calls saying, hey, uh, we have a problem with the software. I've configured it. We're working now. It's working fine for the software A, but now software B uh, doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> I cannot log in. I cannot use it at all. And it's just because of the proxy configuration. Then uh, let's take a step back and ask a question for you. What is a proxy server at all? Uh, 
who of you are familiar with proxy servers? At least one person should. <laughs> All right, perfect. Then uh, it can be a quick slide. So, um, what's a proxy server? There's a long sentence here. A proxy is a communication interface in a network of computers in the form of a physical computer. It works as an intermediary that receives requests on one side and then establishes a connection to the other side via its own address. Uh, okay, uh, too long didn't read, uh, answer how I can <laughs> reach address X. That's simple as that. Um, then you, of course, may have the question, uh, what are proxy server used for? And it's uh, very, very simple. Because there are, uh, at least for the company, uh, anonymization might be an issue for you, that you want to hide your IP address, uh, you want to be... At, more or less anonymous in the internet or world. And you do have the caching issue. That means uh, maybe you have a limited bandwidth or limited capacity in your own net infrastructure network. And that means that you are, uh, in case you are retrieving the same document multiple times, it makes sense to do a cache server and do it caching on a proxy server as well. That's one thing. Then, of course, load balancing. I don't have to explain this, I think. Uh, filtering, that's uh, most likely important for the company as well because uh, they don't want the uh, users to surf on illegal file sharing platforms or s play some online games during the work time. Uh, makes totally sense, uh, my perspective. Uh, depends, and then, uh, of course, protection of your own data as a company, that's, uh, it's your IP and you don't want to lose it. Simple as that. Then, different type of proxy servers. Uh, I think uh, the one who raised your hands are familiar with this typical standard proxy uh, configuration. Uh, the simple ones are, of course, the HTTP, HTTPS proxies and FTP proxies. Uh, then it's getting more complicated. Uh, maybe you can raise your hands because I'm not familiar with someone who have you ever used the SOX proxy server at all? Two, Two three, right, nice. Okay, uh, then Gopher as well? <laughs> Long day ago, okay. <laughs> Interesting, I've never seen one. And then we should get an exchange then. <laughs> Um, those manual proxies are very easy uh, because instead of, of having a direct connection, you are just now asking your proxy server, uh, please uh, give me the site X and then your proxy server will take care of it. Simple as that. And now you can think it's totally fine and everything is uh, working fine. Uh, unfortunately, we do have the other side called automatic proxies configuration. And that's a totally different story. Um, then we have, we have the web proxy auto discovery protocol, and we have the proxy auto configuration. Uh, proxy auto configuration files are JavaScript file where you can have different routes depending on your IP or domain uh, uh, names, and can send them to different proxy servers. So you do, you do not have longer have one proxy server, but also you have multiple. And uh, WPAD one is an interesting one because uh, it was maybe sometimes a good idea to say, no, we don't want to distribute the proxy server address. Let the tell uh, the application to auto detect the proxy server in our network. And it's simple as that. Uh, in case your system is calling x.example.com, it will search for WPAD example.com. And in case it doesn't work, uh, the strategy is to move one level up. But then you are going to vpad.com, and this uh, might not be a good idea at all. <laughs> and uh, we do have a lot of different uh, top-level domains. Uh, and for example, co.uk might be some interesting one. Uh, so how do we know where to stop? And there is luckily a solution for this. is called uh, public suffix lame. Uh, Le PSL does a part for this. So, uh, yeah. But uh, to show it in a graph, uh, so the user X is asking uh, the DNS server 
who has the VPAT server? And, and lucky you are receiving the answer. It's the VPAT host. And in the perfect world, you do have, it's the same as the proxy server as well, but it might also be possible that it's saying, no, I'm not a proxy server. Uh, the proxy server is sitting there, and you will have to ask them about the configuration. And uh, then you will have to ask this proxy server to reach address X. So it's getting more and more complicated. Regarding con the configuration on the systems, it's uh, most likely the same on all platforms. Uh, you do have the chance to do it on an environment level through uh, environment variables. And of course, then there is a system settings configuration on uh, OS X or Mac OS, um, then the settings app on Windows. And on the Linux side, we do have uh, the freedom of choice, possibilities to have different desktop environments. So uh, we do not have one settings app. We have multiple ones. And then there is our, of course, the system configuration level, where we do have the possibility, at least on SUSE, to use etc sysconfig uh, to do the configuration. And then there is a new a movement and a network manager to move the configuration there. And it's still in progress. Uh, so we do have a lot of possibilities. OK. Then I just have to find the correct one, and everything is fine. Um, then the question is, is that all? Um, you may know the answer. The answer is no, of course not, um, because uh, we have a lot of libraries and programming language uh, that are implementing their own network stack. And unfortunately, in a, most often in an incomplete way. So it's a typical faith palm here, right? <coughs> and to the rescue, we have the libproxy. Libproxy. Um, it's a simple solution to ask the question uh, how to get a resource X. And we do have the proxy uh, plugins for the different configuration op options that we do have on Linux, but also support the three uh, major platforms, uh, Linux, OS X, and Windows. And uh, as I've learned in yesterday, uh, no, in the last week, sorry, uh, something called uh, not, not, not uh, something called SmartOS for server, Linux system for smart server. I have never heard about it. Then we, of course, have the BSD ones. So it's not only the three major platforms on different uh, major platforms. I should change it in the slide here uh, because every system seems to have its own configuration and it's getting more and more complicated. But the benefits for Flip Proxy is that we do have a very simple API. We only have four functions initialization uh, to get the information, to free the information, and to shut down the system. Very easy, very easy to integrate in different uh, languages, applications, libraries, whatever. And we can, of course, uh, react to dynamic network changes, besides, uh, as let it be, uh, you are moving with your network from a VPN network to a local network, or you are traveling uh, and switching the networks, uh, uh, Liproxy does the magic for you and uh, re, uh, retrieves the proxy list as, uh, again. And luckily, we do have the bindings to our common programming language. This leads us to a nice slide. And then the question is, of course, is all great, right? We do have a library to answer all those questions. Okay, Dominic is smiling. <laughs> He knows the answer. Um, the advantages, of course, we do have a minimal stable API. No problem at all. We have minimal overhead, minimal dependency, and it just works. Totally fine. Uh, but we fail to integrate it into the major applications. And the disadvantage is, why is that? Because we have, not, have, had, have had no documentation. We had some nice RB clashes uh, regarding upkit upgrades from WebKit, GTK, uh, where the JavaScript interpreter changed, or the Mod.js uh, had problems. Uh, we had no test at all. There was no CI. And we had, yeah, now he's smiling again, right? No? Missing async APA? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we failed. Uh, we had no official integration in many software packages like uh, curl, Python requests, and Every user had to do with this configuration on, the, on its own again. So that's bad. And we as a company has a very, very big 
problem with that. And uh, that's why I reached out to, to Dominic, who has done the maintaining uh, of the libproxy in the past. And um, we, as VW, said, OK, um, we will take care of it, of the development. I'm now the maintainer of the libproxy part. And uh, we have addressed the common issues that we have had in the past. Uh, documentation is now generated out of the code. We have uh, established the test. We are reaching now 72% of coverage. Uh, the major issue that we are facing right now is that uh, we do have not a real environment to set or test uh, the configuration on OS X and Windows because there's no mocking of this situation and once you're doing an CI you're most likely doomed and you're no longer retrieving the results. Uh, we will have to change or check uh, if there is somehow a possibility to do the implementation of those tests. Maybe you know the answer of them, then uh, raise your hand and I will get in touch with you. Um, we do have a CI pipeline, which just is typical stuff that should be done on every software platform. It's a uh, check-in code style. Of course, it tests if either the software builds, uh, does a code scan, a quality check, and then, of course, the page deployment. And now we have moved on to, uh, to glib as a dependency. And thanks to that, we have the possibility to GI to intro object introspection to generate the necessary interface for most common uh, other languages. And this hopefully enabled us to integrate them into the different softwares. So this rewrite has been released uh, two weeks ago as a version 0 0.5.0. And actually, we have re just released 0 0.5.1. Uh, because we have had some uh, bigger issues on the Red Hat system side where we have crashed uh, their system. Uh, sorry for that. Um, but I think it would hit uh, OpenSUSE as well because uh, yeah, Dominic wasn't that fast to deploy it <laughs> to Tumbleweed yet, I think. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, but then you are not testing all the possibilities. That's the issue. <laughs> um, um, of course, we do have a lot of uh, merge requests pending for curl. We are now in contact with the curl maintainer uh, to integrate that there as well. Uh, for the Python requests, we do have patches for WGET, APT is fixed as well, and there is a lot of other software uh, where we are currently moving into, and hopefully this work will work out. So we no longer have to distribute our own patched versions of them. And I learned a lot about SUSE, that we have uh, still a lot of packages that are patched with libproxy. Thanks for that. Uh, but I think uh, it will lower the burden, uh, lower the barrier uh, for the easy integration of newer versions when it's, once it's integrated in the official software part. Um, there's that. Uh, that's just simple interaction. Uh, actually, I would like to get in contact with you to open a Q&A session uh, regarding the lib proxies uh, problems that you are facing. So here are just uh, the typical links for our repository and, uh, of course, the homepage. Um, and I think I would like to thank my boss uh, for working on this project and the other project as well, uh, because we do have a lot of other software in the stack. Uh, like digital signing and with smart cards and events, the OneDrive integration and the GNOME Online accounts. So there is a lot of pending stuff pending at the moment. Uh, so just a, just a tip of an iceberg here. And yeah. in case you're interested in working at VW, you have the possibility. We have a lot of brands uh, where you can work for it. Uh, Carry it, of course, or the other uh, typical brands. Join the session of fun. And then it's just a Q&A session. Very short. So at least I do have a question regarding the Gopher <laughs> proxies <laughs> server. I've used Gopher in the 90s before the World Wide Web was born. It's long dead since Mosaic uh, was a thing. I think you're getting now the Mac as well. <laughs> Yes, I used to use Gopher at the university in the 90s, 
And once Mosaic was up and the World Wide Web was invented, uh, Gopher was dead. So it's really, really long gone. There is now a new version trying to make it revive. So there's really a new version of... There are some really weird people around uh, <laughs> who are trying to make... Uh, if you look on the Wikipedia, you will find out that there is something doing uh, QA at the uh, uh, Gopher. No. Uh, they love it. Uh, it is simple, uh, hierarchical, and you don't have all the confusion about JavaScript and HTML and all the crap. You have just the information. But it's weird. <laughs> like. Interesting, but it means that maybe we should keep up the Gopher support. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And uh, you are still using proxy in your environment or, or in the current environment? No. Okay, lucky you. <laughs> it's just pain in the ass, actually. Uh, so uh, maybe I can ask a question here uh, regarding the Go language support. Maybe someone of you know Go. Uh, we do have a lot of problems with Docker, of course, which is written in Go regarding proxy support, and I will have to uh, create a proxy implementation, but I could need some help there. <laughs> uh, no one knows Go that well. No? That's sad. <laughs> but it won't stop me. Um, thanks for your time. Have fun. <laughs>